All right, and speaking of monkeys, monkeys today, right? Being yes, featured, yes, yes, Corporate yes. Maxi <laughs> here, um, having a series because you went to Africa. A series, a 20 part series, it seems like, on Africa, my <laughs> adventures. It's so fantastic. Take a look. Okay, 10 hours later, finally found my favorite African animal, second only in weight to the uh, elephant as being Africa's heaviest mammal, the hippo. Very amphibious creature, although at night, they'll venture out on the banks and they have these select trails and they'll go and graze. They really prefer those short grasses. Amazing, I'm waiting for one just to open their mouths. They stay in the water during the daytime to prevent sunburns. Just an incredible animal, hear that, hear that? Very, very dangerous, so you have to watch out. They kill more people than crocodiles and lions combined. So literally behind me, there are hundreds of the lesser flamingo. This is an amazing species. They're found right in the alkaline lakes in the Great Rift Valley. What's unique though about the flamingos is they get that beautiful pink coloration from the food they eat, which is found right here in the lake. Okay, you were looking at one of Africa's most common primates, the black, the black-faced vervet monkeys. And you can see they're quite habituated to humans. You can find them in huge troops, up to 50 to 60 individuals. About 50% of them, though, will be um, made up of juveniles, and so both kind of males and females. Just incredible animals living amongst the park here in Kenya. Okay, so right there up in the trees, look right there, look right there. That's the black and white colobus monkey. They're very common around here, kind of eastern Africa. What's unique though, unlike the black-faced vervet monkeys, is they spend a lot of their times in the trees. They very rarely will actually touch the ground, they live in troops, a male and several females, kind of anywhere from three to 12 individuals. Just an incredible monkey species here in Africa. Wow, and that's an incredible segment, of course, the second one of many more to come. Now, a lot of people have been wondering, you know, uh, asking us here, how is it that you made it over there to Africa? You were there for quite a while. How did all, how did all that trip go? Yeah, work? well, you know, I mean, just like with all the television, you know, television segments, just there's so many people behind the scenes that you never see, and just like what you guys do. And so I have to give a special thanks to Dr. Munir Varani from the Peregrine Fund and Dr. Mark Bashard from Boise State University, who organized this trip, because without them, it would not be possible. And they're all behind the scenes, and, uh, you, you know, you really don't see them, but a lot of credit goes out to them. And Very that's important. how you made it over there and got to get and so that's up close how I and made personal. it over there, and that's how I came back in one piece here. For awesome. the, uh, <laughs> and you love hippos. I love hippos, but at night they are so dangerous. They, I mean, they literally chop people in half, and I, I don't mean to be excited about that. But <laughs> that 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 footage of the hippo outside was right outside the cabin, and you know, wow. and you have to be escorted to your tent, um, you know, by special warriors and. Anyway, so they're quite incredible, and they're really quiet, really surprisingly quiet. Kind of scary. We can see why you're excited, Corbin. Yep, very, very excited. <laughs> All right, we're back right after this. We'll find a look at the commute and the forecast. Yes.